Welcome to Pen and Gadget. This is a 1930s, that's right, you heard it, this is almost 100 years old, 1930s Schaefer flat top, ring top, fountain pen. Now, I restored this pen um, lovingly. <laughs> um, it, it came to me in pretty bad shape. Uh, for those who don't know, oh, also, it's, it's a lever fill, if you haven't noticed. Um, these pens are a little bit rare in good condition um, for a few reasons. One, these, these strips of metal, um, sometimes they're plated gold, sometimes they're actual like f gold filled, so to speak. Um, they, they tend to wear out these, this is made out of celluloid, uh, the celluloid cracks fairly easily around here. Um, and overall the pen bodies discolor. In fact, I have another one. Hold on. I forgot to grab it here. Um, they can discolor like this, as you can see, this is a, an example of, of what's out there. Um, but no, no, no. Not this one. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this this one came to me in, in a pretty grimy, dirty, and broken state. However, uh, I gave it a new life. Here is this beauty. Okay, so ah, where do I begin? Uh, this is also, uh, the nib is a 325 nib. Um, excellent. Oh my god. I I almost forgot to say, this thing, it, it has like an extra fine nib tip, which is a little bit like springy too if you want it to be but it, it, it you don't need to apply any pressure at all this thing just glides it's oh my god it's so good <laughs> so um yeah this this uh i restored it this is not something for the faint of heart for for you know restorations uh sometimes it can be hard to bring back to life some of these pens i actually am going to show you a couple of other vintage schaefer pens that um were in really bad condition and uh, i'll flash some photos of you know before and after um but mostly you know you can get them if you know what you're doing uh, back to a, a serviceable you know uh, quality but yeah th this guy ah, i just I, I i love the particular color that it is this jade green from about 1930 to 1940s. Um, hard to date these. Basically what you do is you go through like a catalog um, and, and you kind of just like look at this and then you open up the catalog and you go through every single catalog that was from 1920 to 1950 <laughs> and and you kind of just match things up so you look and you're like okay does, does this look like this oh is the lever this distance from that and oh no it's a little different oh it, oh it's this body but then the the, t the nib it came with was different uh you know so you kind of you kind of go through this matchup game um which takes a little time to date them but yeah i got i got about i think 1936 ish is where this guy comes from um if you don't know how a lever action lever action <laughs> a lever filled uh pen a lever filler pen is um basically this lever here when you pull it up this is inked so let me uh let me cap this guy and i'll, I'll use my other one as uh, the demonstrator if you will um basically this lever okay if you if you look down in here if I pull this lever, okay, you can kind of see. Let's get up in there. In fact, let's 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 go to the macro mode. I think it'll let me do it. Yeah, okay. So this lever, when you pull it, okay, it pushes down inside, and there is a spring. It's called a, a J bar, I believe, or J pressure bar. And it pushes down on this bar. And what it's doing is, um, it, it's like here, actually, I'll show you. It's, it's like one of these, okay? It's, it's basically like uh, uh, an eyedropper, so to speak. Basically, there's a rubber sack. It's called an ink sack. Let's see if I can grab one here. All right, boy, I'm back and forth. There is, um, there's these things called ink sacks, and what they are basically is just uh, uh, a rubber sack. Okay, boy. boy, boy. <laughs> the, the rubber sack that fills up with ink by just vacuum. So just like an eyedropper, right? You, this little squishy part here. Um, when you squeeze down on this, right? 
it's creating a vacuum. It's expelling all the air. So then when you dip it in the ink and you release it, it sucks up the ink, uh, filling the void of where the vacuum was. Well, that's what this does. Basically, this is inside the pen, like so, okay? Um, and when you're pulling that lever up, it's pushing down on the bar. So this is the lever, this is the bar, right? It's pushing and it's pushing down on that bar. So that bar then squeezes this ink sac. And just like what this is doing here, basically you're, you're creating a little eyedropper but instead of the glass tube, it's the rubber tube. And you're, you're squeezing that and then letting go. And it just sucks the ink up and the ink is stored inside this, hence ink sac. So that's what's inside these uh, lever fill. Uh, and you can see this one's a white dot. I'm gonna be restoring this one as well. Um, these are uh, a little bit more prestigious of a pen. However, uh, I think at one point in time or another, white dots were just given to just about anything. But anywho, um, so yeah, basically when when this pen came to me, this pen came to me in a very poor condition. Uh, when I was shaking it, I could hear, like it sounded like a maraca because the original pen sacks, um, they turn to literal dust. Um, yeah, no, they they get completely hard and brittle and then they shatter eventually um, and they just turn into dust. So inside the pen, it was just, uh, it looked like it looked like charcoal, like someone ground up charcoal and basically put it in. So I had to take it apart and um, basically, you know, do a little restore, re restoration job on this. Uh, so with that said, this pen, oh man, I particularly like Schaefer's like design overall for, for their pens. Um, I feel like there's there's a, a good balance with with the, the shape of their their caps. Um, that's one of those things too. Like sometimes pen caps, they 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 don't work well in proportion. And, and they're either too big or too bulbous or too, you know, something's wrong with it. I, I feel like they get the proportions just right with these pens um, and, and hence why I like it. Um, if, we, if we get up real close here, go here, uh, you'll see the engravings are beautiful and crisp and clean. Um, that down there is the patent date which is 14 at the end you can see there. So that's 1914 um, and yeah, yeah, let's 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 uncap this baby here. Now, as for the nib, the nib came to me um, in not horrible shape. This nib, let's get up nice and close here. Okay, um, it was a little tarnished. It is a 14 karat gold nib, so a little hit with the polished cloth, and boom, it looks brand new. Um, I did a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of adjustment on it. Nothing, nothing crazy. And this thing writes so well. Oh my. It's it's just a, a beautiful, beautiful little pen. Now, with that said, okay, there are, let's see. Oh, I, I have ink on me. I'm, I'm inked already. I get, uh, they always get me on camera. It never happens off of camera. It only happens on camera. <laughs> I think there's ink in my cap. That's why. Okay. Um, so, so basically what it comes down to is th these pens are just... They're just the bee's knees. I, 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 I could gush over it for a while, but um, I, I, I'm, a, I'm an aesthetic purchaser. So for me, the aesthetics of the pen, the color of the jade, that's really what, what drew me to it. Now, when I assembled this pen, if, if you've noticed um, in, in like an ad, right, the, the, the lever would be dead center of the tip. Now, I happen to like the way it looks like this. It's very easy to rotate, so I could take this off and rotate it and put it on. But I actually like putting it on the side because when you're dipping the nib, I just pull it on the side instead of on the top. And uh, because, uh, I don't know, it's, I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm a weirdo. But anywho, um, I love these pens, it's hard to get them in a, in a nice coloration like this. Um, again, this one's got a little bit of ink on it. I gotta wipe this off. Yeah, see, it's getting me now. Um, but ultimately, 
you can pick one of these up for not a lot of money if you learn how to size an ink sack and do a little bit of work and have the tools and use a little bit of heat. You know, this is not for the faint of heart, okay? But put it this way. This is a little bit of a piece of history, right? So you're you're working on something that's a uh, hundred years old um, and you risk breaking it. That's the risk you take when you start working on, on these kinds of vintage pens. Um, you know, the, the pros out there, they've got a, a large amount of tools. I've, I've got a decent amount of tools too. Um, you know, basically what it comes down to is you need a lot of picks. You need a lot of scraping instruments to, to clean out the insides. Um, you, you need a lot of uh, uh, little delicate tools to get out the J bar. Uh, if, if it's stuck in there, there's all kinds of things you can, you can do to restore these uh, from various levels of, you know, disarray. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you if you get into it, you could be rewarded by something as beautiful as as this shaver. Now, um, the next thing I'll also touch on is the variations. Okay, um, this is a smaller pen. If you if you watch my channel um, and and hopefully subscribe to my channel, <laughs> um, you'll notice that I have a, a thing for pocket pens. Now, this pen, let's let's get it measured up here. Let's see, let's see. Uh, it is about one, two, three, four, four and a half inches long. So it's just right around that pocket pen size. Um, and it, it, it's that, you know, it's that, that I want to be able to palm it kind of thing. Anywho, I saw it online. I just kind of fell in love with, with the idea of having, um, a lever fill pen that's, you know, almost a hundred years old and it's got that beautiful jade green color. It, it just has, uh, it, it has that something. Now, a lot of you may know that I, I have, um, an affinity for, um, a lot of, you know, stainless steel pens. This is definitely not a stainless steel pen. It's almost the opposite of one. Um, but it still, it still tickles my fancy, if you will. It still brings me to that place where I'm enjoying collecting them. Um, so yeah, the, these you can pick up, ah, I would say in a poor condition, $45 in like a really poor condition where, you know, th this, Th these metal bands are going to be destroyed, um, you know, in the $40 range. It, it, they could go really sky high and it, with perfect, perfect green color, absolutely beautiful, solid all the way through. You're, you're looking in a couple of hundred dollars, you know, $300 up, um, which is still not bad considering when you buy a new $300 pen, right? You're going to buy a, a new $300 pen with this kind of, you know, quality and whatnot. Um, it's probably not going to have a 14 karat gold nib. And if it does, it's not going to have this kind of 14 karat gold nib with, uh, with like the, the, um, I guess the, the, the heritage behind it. Um, and honestly, there's nothing like these vintage nibs. They're, they're so smooth. They're so silky. Um, if you haven't owned one, I really suggest you go out and do so. It will, it will change your mind on what a fountain pen is to own because you go from these new things, right? You, you go from all of these modern pens and these cheap pens. Now this wasn't that expensive for me to purchase because it needed a full restoration. Um, and I put the time and effort into doing the restoration. But ultimately what it comes down to is these pens, uh, they, they've got that quality. You can't, you can't come up with something that has the feel of this celluloid anymore, um, they, unless you buy a new celluloid pen, and then you're looking at, you know, money. But anywho, I, I think this is just such a great way to get into um, vintage pens. Uh, these are easy to work on. There's a lot of um, other like vac fill pens that are vintage that you can buy. Um, again, for the $50 to $100 range, depending on their state of, of needing repair. Those, which I have plenty of, and I, I will do a review on them, those are much, much harder to service. If you want to try to restore a pen yourself, this is a hobby. Now, you know, some people flip these pens, uh, some people keep them, some people just practice doing this. Um, 
get into it as a hobby. Don't get don't get the Schaefer one. Get the like the there there are these here. I'll show you. Um, there are some of these out there. Uh, this one is is in the middle of, of waiting for its pen sack um, to be redone. But yeah, uh, this is just a no name brand. Uh, um, it, you can just see on the nib here. It's just warranted. It is still a 14 karat gold nib, which is beautiful, um, and it, it has a good feel to it. But you can pick one of these up for pretty cheap in in not so great condition, um, and and work on you know learning how to take them apart and do all that stuff. And you could you could use this as an education to then get yourself a really nice jade pen, and then from there you can maybe start collecting them. Uh, like I, I started now, you know, I might get another one of these. Uh, and this is the smaller of the two. They have these these oversized ones as well that they're called. So yeah, you could really go down the rabbit hole with um, with the Schaefer pens, uh, especially uh, uh, some of these older ones. They're, they're really fun and collectible. Um, Value-wise, I think they're just right for the price. I think right now uh, in 20, early 2024, um, I think the prices are just right for you to collect these and enjoy them. Um, I, I, th this is not going to be like a, a case queen or, or something like that. Um, the ones that are, are kind of not fun to, to own because you're a little bit afraid, that you, you know, you don't want to break them to work on them. Uh, get one that's maybe like 90% like this one. And then you've got a really good candidate to, uh, uh, to build a collection of hundred year old vintage, you know, quality high quality uh, Schaefer pens. Uh, anyway, I've rambled on. <laughs> uh, this this has been my little overview of the Schaefer's flat top, ring top, small size. I can't remember exactly what it's called. 325 nib. <laughs> These pens, I gotta tell you, when you're looking them up, it's so hard because you're, you're like, oh, wait, this has one band and, and in the photo it has two bands and I didn't realize it. That means it's actually not this. It's that... Oh. It is a little bit of a, of a trip down <laughs> some research uh, to, to figure out exactly what you are buying and what you did buy. But anywho, uh, that's enough rambling for me. This has been Pen and Gadget. Saying sayonara.